if you ask Ukrainians, they believe that they could take back a significant chunk of Russian occupied territory. But a leaked document from the U.S. says that that might not be the case. From the U.S. perspective, uh, you know, and this document was dated a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago, so things uh, may have changed slightly. Mm -hmm. But it was the DOD's perspective at the time that Ukraine really wasn't, uh, shouldn't be expected for, you know, vast success in this offensive. Rather, you know, m minimal gains, but, you know, some gains. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle, and I'm joined today by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, the Pentagon leaks have been the dominant story, really, in the whole national security arena. <coughs> what are some of the things that we've learned, and why are people so troubled about these leaks? So, uh, to start at the, at the end and then go back to the beginning, uh, the Department of Justice announced just a short while ago the arrest of a 21-year-old Massachusetts Air National Guardsman named Jack Teixeira. Right. He's been accused of leaking hundreds of classified U.S. documents illegally, mm -hmm. uh, and he did so on a Discord channel, uh, which is you know, a social media platform. Uh, we've seen reports that he was trying to do this uh, to win over some friends, mm -hmm. you know, to make some, you know, lasting relationships within people in this group that he was a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are, you know, wide-ranging uh, consequences for his actions. He's been arrested. There are some international relationships, yes. though, that might have been affected by this. Absolutely. Level. And so some of the documents that he released uh, included very sensitive information about things like uh, positioning in for Ukrainian troops in the war. We saw documents released about, uh, you know, Russia's, you know, the Kremlin's inner workings, which, mm -hmm. you know, gave a lot of insight, un you know, unintentionally from the Department of Defense's perspective about their level and the intelligence community's level of access to the Kremlin. Mm -hmm. And so there were really stark revelations from some of these documents, uh, but we, we've seen that DOD is not willing to comment because to them, these are documents that we shouldn't have access to anyway. Right. Now we do though. And so there are a number of different aspects that uh, reporters are now sifting through, trying to figure out information, what to glean from it. Uh, but there is a, a secondary component, which is at least one of these documents that were released uh, once it was published online, was then altered. And so now there's a component as well of misinformation and disinformation carried through these leaked documents. So in the one most specific and notorious example that we've seen of so far, there was a document that was released, uh, and it looked like it was from the Joint Chief of Staff. Right. And they give briefings, whether it's to General Milley or other senior level Joint Chief officials. And so one of these pages leaked, uh, and in it it said, you know, this is the number of casualties that Russia has experienced. This is the number of casualties that Ukraine has experienced. Mm -hmm. This photo was published, uh, you know, as I said, on Discord. And so even though he's been leaking for weeks now, uh, it only really became known over the last week when these documents left Discord and, you know, other people involved started publishing them on Telegram and Twitter and other social media platforms, which is how it became a, an international story. But so this one document said the Russian and the Ukrainian casualty counts, and then a subsequent document appeared on social media as well, almost identical. Mm -hmm. But it had the Russian casualty count much lower mm -hmm. and the Ukrainian count much higher. Now, mm -hmm. we don't know who's responsible for the change and whether or not it was Teixeira who's been arrested, uh, but this specific change actually benefits Russia. So there is you know, some indication to suggest that he may or may not have been responsible for the change, but he leaked it you know, a, a pro-Russian individual then doctored the document and then reposted it. Uh, but we've also seen uh, documents leak that's, that, you know, suggest or purport that uh, Russia almost took down a UK plane in September uh, as it flew over uh, Crimea and the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a report come out that Egypt considered supplying Russia with weapons, uh, though the National Security Council tells me uh, that they haven't seen that to date. Mm -hmm. And so another aspect that makes this whole thing tricky is any one of these documents that you look at uh, is from a snapshot in time. Sure. And so whatever that document says, and a lot of them are dated the end of February and early March, uh, may, or not, may or may not still be accurate right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a n there are a number of questions still swirling about uh, not only the documents, but the validity of them and whether or not they've been altered. So prior to the arrest, when there were briefings at this, whether the briefings were held by the Department of Defense, whether they were held by the State Department, whether they were held by the White House, 
there really didn't seem to be a lot of answers, even on basic questions such as, is the leaking over? Absolutely. They're really, uh, at, you know, as we heard from these officials, they really didn't want to get ahead of, you know, investigations. Now, the Department of Defense is conducting their own investigation right. <coughs> in addition to the DOJ one, which is a criminal investigation. We watched the, arre the arrest happen as a result of the DOJ probe. Mm -hmm. uh, but a number of questions, uh, as we've discussed, uh, remain unanswered, whether that's, you know, are there more documents, you know, yet to be released? Uh, and so part of it is <coughs> we don't know exactly what's to come of this. And because DOD doesn't have this information yet, they can't really put out additional information. Uh, but so they have been, you know, referring everyone back to this DOJ investigation, which has now obviously since uh, resulted in arrest, but it doesn't, it hasn't necessarily resulted in more answers. So the, the federal authorities really did seem to be sort of caught flat-footed by all this. They did. It did seem uh, like there was... They weren't expecting this, obviously. They mm -hmm. wouldn't have expected it. They, you know, the Pentagon reiterates even to this point uh, that they believe they're, you know, they're, the way they go through classified information, while they're, they're now reviewing it and they, they're trying to reduce the number of people who have access, they still stand by those, those programs. Protocols. They stand, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be interesting to see if there are any new protocols or changes to protocols that can come of this, mm -hmm. but so far we've only heard that there, there are discussions underway, but nothing uh, to announce yet. Now the national security implications <coughs> and, the, and the security of classified data implications, those things are all very concerning, but have there been some things that we've learned about the war in Ukraine that we didn't know before these leaks took place? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. So one of the documents gave a pretty bleak assessment as to Ukraine's coming spring offensive. Mm -hmm. Now we've known for a while now that Ukraine was essentially building up their supplies, building up their weapons for this, you know, expected offensive where, you know, if you ask Ukrainians, they believe that they could take back a significant chunk of Russian occupied territory. But a leaked document from the U.S. says that that might not be the case. From the U.S. perspective, uh, you know, and this document was dated a you know a couple weeks ago, so things uh, may have changed slightly. Mm -hmm. But it was the DoD's perspective at the time that Ukraine really wasn't uh, shouldn't be expected for you know vast success in this offensive. Rather, you know, m minimal gains, but you know some gains. Mm -hmm. And so this is not necessarily the most shocking revelation, given uh, General Milley said you know a couple weeks ago it would be really difficult for Russia to or for Ukraine to kick all of Russia out of its territory. Right. So, there, so General Milley at least gave some, uh, when he gave his pred prediction, it was not necessarily far off from the intelligence that has since been, you know, leaked illegally. Mm -hmm. And there have been some things that we've discovered that are not really all that favorable to Russia, such as, you know, some of the purchases uh, attempted by their mercenary <coughs> group, casualty numbers, may, uh, some, some potential infighting among the Russians. That's correct. So we've also seen, uh, and this goes to the the wide, you know, the the expansive nature of the U.S. intelligence system. We've now seen reporting, you know, emanate from these leaked documents uh, that there's been infighting within the Russian Ministry of Defense, uh, as well as their, you know, internal, uh, you know, criminal service, the FSB, and the two of them have, you know, internally argued over the death count in. Russia, essentially, uh, according to, you know, these leaked documents, the, the military and the defense ministries essentially, you know, afraid to report the, the actual casualty counts. And so they're excluding some individuals here and there, whether it's the Wagner Group or others, uh, to keep that number a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. And so it really is a, a tremendous uh, leak for the public to now recognize, and not only the public, but potentially the Kremlin, to recognize the level of the U.S. Uh, intelligence community, specifically as it relates to I insights into the Kremlin and into Vladimir Putin's circle. Thank you, Mike. You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.